welcome back to Telltale. I'm Emily. I'm Greg. And I'm just finishing the story <laughs> because she doesn't remember it, and I don't remember it in whole lot of detail. But it's a it's a pretty short, simple yeah, story. Yeah, it was a pretty sh sh short story. We're uh, doing um, William Pope Hodgson's the a tropical horror, and go ahead and give them details as I do. This quick. was published in. June of 1905 in a magazine called The Grand Magazine. Never heard of it. Mm -hmm. And synopsis is, is really simple. You have a sailing ship. Samantha, sailing ships. Ships! It's on the ocean. And Crazy they get attacked by a giant sea monster. And this sea monster is extremely worm-like and also kind of like Cthulhu-like because it's got tentacles and all kinds of shit. Yeah, it's okay. huge and it's and it's, it's like a giant trying to seek people eel. out. And these guys are trying to hide in the inner parts of the ship to stay away from it. Yeah, and guys and trying to kill that are, it. The ones that are telling the story, they can hear the people outside getting eaten. And yeah, they're hearing them getting eaten. At one point, um, people below deck are trying to shoot this thing with a cannon, one of the signal cannons that they have, to try and like harm it which they successfully harm it but at their the expense of their own lives because now they them off. blew a <laughs> hole through the bottom of the ship and now it knows it's they're there so he just reaches one of his tentacles down and starts glup glupping everybody up <laughs> and this guy and one of the younger guys a jokey or what do they call him no oh, i don't remember I mean, it's jokey. didn't write the name jokey down. they call him jokey okay. jokey um okay. are kind of going in and out so the narrator and Jokey are the two people who first see the monster as it comes on board. Everybody else was subsequent after them. Um, they happen to escape into one of the houses, like what's called the house. Yeah. Um, I don't know what part of the ship that is. But then, like, they basically realize when they bolt the door, they're going to be as safe as possible. But Jokey's kind of falling in and out of consciousness since seeing this thing. So the guy drags him in there, gets the door bolted. Um, then they realize the monster can see them through the porthole, so they have to slide the um, storm, the metal storm uh, covers over the portholes to keep it from breaking in. And they're just sitting here and listening to this thing destroy their friends and the ship. And at one point, they do take a peek out to see what the hell is going on. And they're watching it climb up the mast and get the guys who've been stuck in the mast for like 18 hours. <laughs> so they basically go through this for three days mm -hmm. until finally the monster starts breaking through the door to get them. Yep. And the guy just hacks at this thing with yep. whatever he can find uh, because it's trying to eat Jokey. In mm -hmm. particular, and then I can't remember how they how they survived this. It's been a few days since I read it, and a number of other stories. They discover a youth of about nineteen who is the first one who survived and starts hacking at this thing, and half the body of a fourteen year old of a fourteen year old. So they get rescued by another ship, mm -hmm. and that's the state they find these two boys in. 14 year olds half eaten not alive yeah and this 19 year old who's basically insane from the entire thing mm -hmm. who can't who gives them a story but doesn't seem rational so they think he just he just crazy from being at sea for so long and there was probably a mutiny or some shit mm -hmm. but then where are all the bodies so yeah that's basically the entire story sorry spoiler alerts <laughs> literally just so, had to review it now because I speed re sped read it before I got here. And then I'm like, shit, I don't remember much. I remember like the beginning, but I'm like, crap, I can't remember how it ended. But I brought it along because I knew that would happen. It's been almost a month since I read it. And so I can't, yeah. couldn't remember the ending either. I've just um, had so much happen in like a very short span of I time. I feel like retaining information is very difficult. I've read... Like a lot. Three, four novels and six short stories since I read this. <laughs> I've just had a lot of life happen. Like just trying to stay on top of holiday stuff and mm -hmm. work and mm -hmm. my car's dying. That's and, been happening too. Yeah. Lots of things. Yeah. So, so yeah. I enjoyed the story. Um, I think it's a, I think it's a really, really cool kind of horrifying early version of this kind of sea monster attack genre 
you know, predating Jaws, predating Beast, you know. Um, and so very enjoyable. Uh, not quite as mysterious as ho as other stories that Hodgson wrote. But that's okay. I, it, it's it's an more adventure of a story. Yeah. yeah. And the horror is in the attack and what this monster is doing to people. And it, it does get a little intense. And being aware that they're just getting picked off one by one by one by one by this mysterious thing. And mm -hmm. they're just all trapped. Mm -hmm. There's nothing they can do. So I think it's a really, really good story. Not a great story. I'm not going to... It's not, I don't think it's quite top tail. No, material. it wasn't top tail for me. But also I feel like... Because of how quickly I read it, I don't necessarily feel like a lot of my critique is very relevant, oh. unfortunately. Well, so, I mean, so, it's relevant, but it's... So, listen to me. Take if, it with a grain you, of salt. If you like horror, if you like mm -hmm. Lovecraft-type stuff, if you like sea monsters, uh, this is a good story for you to read. Samantha. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I have it in the Adrift on ha on the Haunted Seas, uh, which mm -hmm. is a compilation of uh, some of the best stories of William Hope Hodgson, which is... a pretty accessible it's not so much the best stories that book no. is all just sea stories just the sea just sea horror stories mm -hmm. so it's a really amazing book also and i got it at half price books for dirt cheap and gave it to you <laughs> yeah it's like 11 books yeah it's nice so easy to easy cheap and easy yeah that's the way we like it indeed so <laughs> i did have one critique not necessarily about the story itself okay but about, about the internet and the people on it so i had gotten into an argument on one of the william hope hodgson's facebook pages with a gentleman who said that it is impossible for h for hp lovecraft to have been influenced in any manner by hope william hope hodgson's because he read it so late he claimed to have read William Hope's Hodgson's work so late in life and had no recollection of having read anything sooner. What about this didn't sound Cthulhu-esque to you? <laughs> like, if I need proof, this is it. So if that person is listening, I don't know where you are. You probably don't follow us because I argued with you. But definitely had those Lovecraftian vibes yeah. It it seemed very blatant to me in a lot of respects. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah. Well, na 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 na. -na. <laughs> <laughs> is how I feel about that. I I don't know enough about the timeline to know that. I just I just know Lovecraft does mention yeah, that Hodgson I mean, in supernatural I horror and literature. So. Two quotes on this book from Lovecraft. Yeah. On the just on the cover alone, mm -hmm. front and back covers alone. So So at some time Lovecraft did read Hodgson and, and did, did praise know him. him. But and yes. It is a little hard to believe. Maybe he didn't read this story, but it's a little hard to believe he never came across any of Hodgson's work before he started writing Cthulhu Mythos because his work is so much like Hodgson. Yeah, it is it's I'm not going to say it's a ripoff because it's not. It's very well, original. No, yeah. but but it is so similar <laughs> in so many respects that I have yeah. a very hard time believing that he did not have some kind of influence from Hodgson. Whether he remembers it or not is his own prerogative. Mm -hmm. He's dead now, so we can. He's not here to defend <laughs> himself, so we can say whatever. <laughs> okay, the but, guy online or or Lovecraft. <laughs> a guy online can say whatever, but I mean, we just block you anyway. This is definitely. But the point I'm making is if you enjoy Lovecraft, of course, yeah. and I, I will sound like a broken record for any William Hope Hodgson that we read. Mm -hmm. If you love Lovecraft, you will enjoy Hodgson for sure. Mm -hmm. Definitely. A lot of the same vibes, a lot of the same um, vocabulary and mood setting, very similar styles, lots of great monsters, lots of original monsters. Mm hmm. Which feel a little ripped off, come to think of it, when you get to H.P. Lovecraft. But he, he expounds on it a lot more than I feel like Hodgson does. And makes them different enough. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you enjoy Lovecraft, you will enjoy Hodgson. So, our next Hodgson, which I believe will be number four, if I'm not mistaken. The Valley of Lost Children. Mm, that sounds creepy as hell, because there's lost children. Mm -hmm. In Are a they? valley. In a valley, probably skeletal. Whenever you have a valley, you've got something that's going to be very weird. I believe it. <laughs> I believe it. It's just the way valleys are. 
avoid the valleys because they are weird. Especially the valley girls. <laughs> I take it back. Every valley girl I've met has been lovely, but they really do okay. talk like that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay. So yeah, if that's all I have to say about this one. It was a fun adventure. Yeah. It was a great horror yeah, story. It's a fun story. And it's cool because like the horror is it, in the fact that they are trapped. Yeah. There's nothing they can do. Yeah. They're in the middle of the sea. Yeah, they're just fish food. Yep. They're serpent. Sea serpent food. Yep. So yeah. Thanks for joining us, guys. Like, subscribe, comment on any of the thoughts you have on this particular story if you get a chance to read it. And we tell definitely... her she's wrong. Yeah, tell me I'm wrong <laughs> about Lovecraft not being influenced by this. Cause like shit, it just just read it and find out. Fuck around and find out. So anyway. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for joining us, guys. We'll see you next time.